Hello, today we're going to create this colorful text animation. It's fully procedural. It doesn't require any third-party plugins. You can use any font and any colors. Let's begin. First of all, check that you're working in 16 bits per channel. This will make the gradients much more smooth. A 32 bits mode makes some layer styles work incorrectly, so we'll use 16 bits. Create a new composition. Let's call it text base. It will be the basic text pre-comp that will be used throughout the tutorial. Add a new text layer. I'm also going to add a text preset that I use often. The link to the project file is in the description, so you can use it as well. Okay, let's go on with creating a main composition. I will call it Gradient. Add a null object. Let's call it Control. We'll stack all the color controls and other settings there. Let's start with a background. Let's use some violet color for the background. Create a new solid. Let's call it Background. Add a fill effect. I'll click on the color stopwatch and select the control layer and link the fill color to the background color control. Now we can adjust the background color using the control layer. There will be more controls by the end of the video, so it will be very handy. I'll just make the color a bit darker. What I would also like to do is add a bit of a vignette. Add a circle effect. Make it bigger, invert it. Set the color to black and the blending mode to multiply. Increase the feather a lot and adjust the opacity so that it pops up just a bit. Drag and drop the text-based composition onto the timeline on top of the background layer and call it Gradient. Let's add two text color controls. As we're creating a gradient, I'll use some pinkish and something bluish that fits with the background color. Select a gradient layer and add a gradient ramp effect. We'll link the ramp colors to the control layer, just as we did with the background. Let's also adjust the gradient points so that they fit the text size better. Add another copy of the text-based comp to the timeline, just under the gradient layer. Let's call it Bevel. I'll also add some more controls to the control layer. An angle control to adjust the effect direction. Set it to 225 for now. And a slider control to control the bevel depth. I'll set it to 3. Select the bevel layer and add a drop shadow effect. Let's call it bevel 1, as we'll have several copies. Set the opacity to 100. And let's link the shadow direction and the shadow distance to the new controls. Turn on the Shadow Only checkbox to get rid of the artifacts around the text. Duplicate the Bevel 1 effect and turn off the Shadow Only switch. Create some more copies of the Bevel 2 effect. 10 overall will work great. Now let's copy and paste the Gradient Ramp effect from the Gradient layer. We'll add one more color control. This will be the Bevel color. Let's set it to something close to the background, but darker. Select the bevel layer and add a tint effect. Link both black and white colors to the bevel color control.
Set the amount of tint to something around 70. Let's make it even darker. Let's add some layer styles. With the selected bevel layer, go to Layer, Layer Styles, and select Bevel and Emboss. Let's adjust it a bit. Set the size to 2. Soften to 3. Adjust the altitude to something around 60. Set the shadow opacity to 0. Alt-click on the angle stopwatch and link it to the direction control. We'll also add a plus value text after the expression, so that we can adjust the angle manually, but it still will follow the direction of the effect. Let's add one more layer style, satin this time. Set the blending mode to screen and color to white. The opacity can be really low, but increase the distance and size parameters. And again, we will link the angle to the direction control and add plus value to manually adjust it. Let's go on with the shadow. Select the control layer and add one or more color control. This will be for the shadow color. Again, I'll set it to something close to the background. We'll also need a slider to control the shadow opacity. I'll set it to 100 for now. Duplicate the bevel layer, rename it to shadow. We don't need any of the layer styles, so delete them. And delete the gradient ramp and tint effects as well. Add a drop shadow effect. Alt-click on the color, opacity, and direction stopwatches and link them to the controls. A small shadow appears, but we need something bigger and softer. Set the distance to 1 and the softness to 2. Also, don't forget to turn on the Shadow Only checkbox. Duplicate the drop shadow effect and turn off the Shadow Only checkbox. Increase the distance and the softness a bit. Make another copy and increase them a bit more. One more copy and increase a bit more. Finally, one more copy and increase the values a bit more. Let's make the shadow even darker. And decrease the opacity. I'll drop another copy of the text base onto the timeline. Let's call it Highlights. I'll also add another slider to the control layer. Set it to 100 for now. Select the Highlights layer and go to Layer, Layer Styles, Inner Shadow. First set the Fill Opacity to 0, as we need only the shadow. Set the Blending Mode to Screen and Color to White. Link the Opacity to the Highlights control. And link the Angle to the Direction control, again with the plus value text. Adjust it a bit. Adjust the distance and the size values. Let's lower the highlights opacity to something around 60. Let's add some glossy reflection. Duplicate the background layer. Put it on top. Delete the effects and call it Reflection. Set the Blending Mode to Screen. Go to Effects, 
Generate Gradient Ramp. Put the gradient point really close to the text. Let's add some waves. Add a CC Jaws effect. Set the completion to 50%. The center Y value to 1080. Direction to 180 and shape to waves. Now you can play with the height and width values. and put the center a bit lower. Now we need to add a set matte effect so that the reflection matches the shape of the text. Select any of the text layers as a matte. Adjust the center a bit. And of course we can add another control for the reflection. Alt click on the opacity stopwatch and link it to the control. I'll set it around 60. You can easily animate the reflection. Set a center keyframe on frame 0. Move the time indicator further and adjust the center X value. Add an adjustment layer. Call it adjustments. and add some blur, just a tiny bit. Now on top of that, a sharpen effect, around 100. See, the image gets more crisp and contrast. Now finally, add a bit of noise. You can change the text inside the text base comp. You can use another font. Just adjust the gradient ramp points to fit better. All the controls are in one place, so easily change the colors and other settings. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you soon.